You yeah. have <laughs> absolutely phenomenal food anywhere that you want to go here, from Western food to Thai food to Japanese food. I mean, any type of Asian food you want. Fresh seafood every day. You've got a plethora of women that are more than happy to be friendly and be nice to you. Yeah. And that's the whole culture. What's good team? Salute and salutations. Welcome to Beautiful Eyes. We are going to my friend's business. Check this out. Aster Plus Thai Massage and Spa here. You are going to have the opportunity to meet my good friend Frank, uh, who is an Air Force veteran, and check out his business here in Pattaya, Thailand. What's good team? So I am here at Aster Thai Massage and Spa with my new friend, the commissioner himself, <laughs> Frank. What's up, Frank? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, El Guapo. How you doing today? Man, I can't complain, dude. We, uh, we have been spent a few days together, man. We have. We've yeah. had a great time. Yeah, we've had a great time, man. Thank you for putting all the golf together and everything. So Frank, I met through Richie Max. Salute to the Travel OG. Um, and Frank uh, is an Air Force veteran, and he owns Aster Time Massage and Spa, along with a couple of other places. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we have uh, Aster Time Massage, and we have Aster Wash and Dry as well. Awesome, awesome. And so this all started out, you've done over 20 years in the, in the military. Uh, you did your thing. Thank you so much for the service of our country. Thank you. You as well. Man, I tried. You, you as well. Air Force man all the way. Yes, sir. So, um, and you were just telling me that, you know, you had a plan from the beginning to right. retire overseas. Exactly. Right? When I, uh, my first assignment uh, when I was 19 was Okinawa, Japan. Okay. And I was very fortunate. I was in Okinawa. I wasn't even there 30 days. And we were off to the Philippines. Nice. And then I came back and I was home. Next thing I know, I'm going to Korea. Nice. And then I'm coming back, and then mainland Japan, and so I got to travel a lot of the Far East. I extended um, five times. I ended up spending six years overseas. Right. And uh, I wouldn't have came back to the States unless they made me. Got um, it. But at that time, I knew that I enjoyed the Far East. Okay. And that there was a lot to offer here. So at that point, I kind of knew somewhere down the road, I'd eventually come back here. I just didn't know exactly when. Right. And. Uh, my brother, after I retired, he actually moved to the Philippines. Okay. And he still lives there. He's in Bacolod, um, down in the Savais. And um, so I got, I went to visit him 2019. So uh, right about 2018, 2019, I was officially deciding, okay, I'm, I'm ready to retire. I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to go someplace. And I had about 10 countries on my list that I, I really wanted to look at. Wow, 10. And so I was originally, thinking in uh, Mexico, uh, Costa Rica, Panama, um, and even Ecuador down in that area. Right. And then I was looking Spain and Portugal and Europe. And then along with the Far East, then I had the Philippines, Thailand, of course, Korea and Japan were all on my list because I'd been there before. Right. And so I started looking almost five years before I came here and I started looking at all the cost of living, um, the road structures, the medical, um, long-term care, which was a big issue for me. Yep. And of course the food. And food is phenomenal. The here. food is phenomenal. So I started knocking off my list everywhere I wanted, you know, each one, what they offered and did stuff. And Panama was pretty close. Panama, Costa Rica were pretty close, had just about everything too. Um, Spain and Portugal were right there as well. But I came back to Thailand again a couple years ago and I ended up meeting my Thai partner. Okay. Um, in the States. And we start talking and, and I said, you know what? I, I'm, I just want to go to Thailand. I'm, right. I want to come back to Thailand. I love the weather. It had so much more to offer here. The infrastructure is great. It had golf all over. Yep. And I said, my, my final decision was the health care and primarily the long-term care. Because the one of the things I wanted to look at was, you know, I'm starking to get up there in years. And you look good for uh, your age, it, bro. It, you don't it, have to tell the audience, but if you want to, you'd be surprised that Frank's age, man. Um, I'm 61. Man. I'm going to be 62 here knocking on the door in another month or so. Hell and, yeah. And um, hopefully that Social Security kicks in quick. And, uh, <laughs> you don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> but it's just a, um, it made me, I was looking at it because I've also had parents and stuff to take care of. And one of the things I wanted to look at was 
if something happened to me, I wanted everybody to take care of me. Long-term care was primarily what I was interested in. That, that was the final tipping factor for coming here. So if I needed a, a nurse to live with me, to help take care of me, it's like $600 a month here, US. Are you serious? And if I needed to go to a long-term care facility, it would be about $1,600 a month. And that's everything all in. Wow. And compared to like the states, I mean, if you've looked at the cost in the states for long-term care, you can't even touch a long-term care for less than eighteen to 20000 a month. Gee, I didn't and know that. It's a, it, it's horrendously expensive. The way we treat our elderly in the States is disrespectful. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things for me that was a really big factor because I'm like, I don't want my kids and everybody to have to, I'm, I'll take care of me. Right. And you can come see me do whatever, but um, I don't want to put that burden on anybody else. And, right. And, and I figured I could live here and I'd be good to go. Um, I plan on living a lot longer than that, but uh, yeah, you will. I, I won't Dude, need... you're in better shape than I am, and I'm freaking 16 <laughs> years younger than you, man. Till we get um, a little bit older. But those were the final determining factors for me to right. come. And last September, I retired, came to Thailand. We built a house um, up in Kong Yeah, Kong. we're going to show some of the footage of the house, man. This property that Frank built, oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I asked him for an invite yesterday. I, when I saw I was like, damn, Frank. I see how you living, baby. <laughs> but yeah, it's not a house; it's a compound. Yes, yeah. it's a um, it's a Thai style house. It's uh, in the farm. We're out away from everybody. Right. Um, and uh, I totally love it out, peace and quiet. Talk um, about the farm a little bit, man. So, what do you guys do on the farm? So on the farm, her family has um, rice fields and they raise sugar beets and yeah. everything. And then we actually have a organic farm as well. So we're raising fish and prawns, snails, wow. um, soft shell crab, and we planted bananas, coconut trees, bamboos, mango, lemongrass, ringula. We have a big garden. So literally, um, we're self-sustained. We walk out, we go catch some fish, pick out whatever vegetables, fruit that we want for dinner and go Gosh. back and fix it. And y we don't have to go anywhere. Right. And my long-term goal is to eventually put solar in at the farm as well. And you'll be 100% so off the grid. So completely off the grid and, you know, take care of ourselves. Um, we've got a lake right there. Her family does all the farming and everything, but I like going out. I, I'm getting my hands dirty, but it's amazing, you know, with all the technology, they're still out there with hands and yeah. hoes and doing stuff, you know, pulling weeds and regular farm stuff. Yeah. You know, everyday work. Um, I was telling my daughter one thing for everybody. I've got two kids. i got seven grandkids. Good for you, um, man. I'm excited to bring my grandkids over and let them experience another culture, but I want them to come on the farm with me. Right. Now, I want to leave the iPads, all the phones, all, all that electronic stuff out the door, and let's go back. We're going to go out and play. We're going to work. We're going to go catch our food. We're going to cook it. We're going to spend family time together. Yep. Um, that's one of the things I love about the Thai culture here. Everybody's so friendly, but if you look at their families and everything they're doing, they work hard every day. They, they average 10 to 12 hour days, six, sometimes seven days a week. But if you see them every night, they're all sitting down, they're having dinner, they're talking, they're doing family stuff. Right. And uh, I, wanna, I want my grandkids to be exposed to that. And if my daughter lets me, I'm gonna bring them over and put them in international school. Oh, that would and, be and, awesome. And we know from being in the service, you know, I can't tell you the education I got my first assignment going overseas. Yep. It, it's so eye-opening, but to experience another culture, to meet other friends, to, I mean, I've still got friends, I've known um, Japanese and Okinawan friends from my first assignment that, right. you know, it's just one of those, it's such a small world. Yeah. And, but to be exposed to that when you're a kid and meet here in Thailand, the international schools, you could have over 20 different nationalities in your school. Really? Yes. It's a, they've got not only, you've got Thai, you've got um, European, British, Swedish, Norwegian, um, Malaysian, um, Japanese. You've got all the cultures that are in these schools here. And think about it, even for your kids, to be exposed. Think of the friendships that they could build. I can only imagine. From, I mean, and now technology today, I mean, the kids, I mean, they, 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 pro, they programmed yeah. my phone and so, said, yeah, we used to have to write letters, which was never going to happen. You know, it's like, if I said, I'll see you later, that meant I just see you later. I was not going to write you. Right. <laughs> but now with social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, everything, even YouTube, P 
people are more connected now than, than we've ever been. And, but to have that network as a child, and I, I'm just a teenager, right. to be exposed, this opens up so many. You learn more education. I think that the experiences you get from that are much more valuable than anything they're gonna get from a classroom. Right. And So let me ask you, man, because you now are half a year plus into this international adventure. Um, any regrets, any misgivings? Are you a little scared here and there? You've accomplished a lot in the time that you've had over here, bro. Um, no misgivings. My only regret was I didn't do it earlier. Okay. Um, and I originally had thought about doing it earlier, just had life circumstances, family things to take care of. That, right. uh, and once that was all settled, I was out. Um, I would do it all again in a heartbeat. Okay. It's, this is a, for me, and I was telling, I was just telling my daughter a couple weeks ago, I said, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying my retired life. I right. mean, every day, I, we were talking about this on the golf course the other day. I have to pinch myself sometimes, yep. just to make sure that I'm not dreaming, that I'm all right. That it's, you know, you can wake up here, I, I can go to the gym, I go get in the pool, I can walk to the beach, I can see the sunset. Mm -hmm. Like we went and sat, had dinner the other night right on the beach and the ocean coming down and doing wow. things. Um, we go golfing two or three times a week and, and you know and how much- And we have a freaking blast. I played like crap yesterday too, but it was so much fun, man. We had a great time. Yeah. And you, you know the thing about it is you really don't care. You don't care at You all. really don't care. We're having fun and the caddies are having a good time. Yep. And, and it's just one of those, and we're not in a hurry to go anywhere. Yep. And just like we're talking about with the golf, I mean, for almost, what did we spend, 50 bucks yesterday? And that included all in the green fees, the carts, the caddies, the tips, the drinks, the, the gambling that we did, the yeah. little bit of, on each hole and alleged, stuff like that. Alleged gambling. Alleged, YouTube, yeah, alleged yeah, gambling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and um, wagering. Yes. And, um, but all in, I mean, you can't, you can't even get on a course for $50 in Not the States anymore. Not even close, man. And, and you got to carry your own stuff. I was so. telling Richie Mac, I was like, dude, this is ruined golf for me. Here, just the caddy experience. It's so expensive to go somewhere and get a caddy these days yeah. on a golf course in the States, but yeah, man. So you're familiar, you know Richie Mac. Yes. You're familiar with the Passport Bro movement, the Passport yes. Joes, which is the moniker yep. given to the white men that you guys have, you're like 40 years ahead of us with this thing, man. For those of, uh, and you've met a lot of the guys that came out to uh, support Zoom to Thailand and Richie, you know, and a lot of them are serious about getting places out here. Yes. For those guys that are in the States that might have the ability to work remotely, to uh, take their talents overseas, but are a little bit apprehensive, what would you say to them? It's interesting because we're going to take a video of Robert here in just a few minutes. He's in getting a massage. Okay. But we just had this conversation 10 minutes ago. So Robert's here on the excursion as well. Mm -hmm. So um, shout out to Zoom to Thailand. Um, Shout out you have to Zoom yeah, Tribe. Yeah, 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 the Zoom Tribe. Um, like and subscribe there as well. Yep. Um, follow Richie Mac. Um, it's a lot of fun. And um, we'll be kicking his butt in golf again here this next week. Yeah. Uh, but um, we were just talking about it. If you got the opportunity to be remote, my suggestion, I mean, it's in there. I wouldn't come here with less than 50K in the bank. Okay. Um, that's just safety net, be in there. And come in you can get a place to live you can do just about any activity you want to do and if you're working online and you have to check on the visa type whatever works for you what you're going to do right um if you make two thousand to twenty five hundred us dollars here listen y'all you say can, it again two thousand to twenty five hundred you can you can live comfortably you can do whatever you want to do three thousand to thirty five hundred you're you can do just about any adventure that you want to do. Um, you can golf, you can ride bikes, you can do archery, you can go to the shooting range. They got one of the best ranges out here that really? I've ever, oh dude, it's, it's smoking range. I'm gonna come um, next, I'm gonna go next, I love yeah, going to the range. So we'll have to go to the range. Um, fishing, um, going out on the boats, jet skiing, being With on the $3, ocean. $3,500, Frank. $3,500 a month. Dude, my and, mortgage is more than so 35 now, in, so in now the you've US. Got, yeah, and I can relate. That's So um, if you guys haven't, I'm going to throw out a, a shout out to Chocolate Man in Thailand. Shout too. out to Chocolate Man. Uh, about to hit his birthday, yeah, man. Yeah, his birthday is coming up the 31st. He could be a big 5-0. Yeah. And, uh, and you got to go to Chocolate Man in Thailand. Like and subscribe as well. Show James some love. Yep. Um, so I actually came a year and a half ago, 
And um, I'm gonna throw out another shout out to Foreigner Joe. If you okay. haven't seen Foreigner Joe's channel, look at Foreigner Joe. And um, no time to be sad. Uh, look at those two channels. Oh, I like and, that. And um, no time to be sad. And then Chocolate Man. So we went to dinner with them. They met me, we were down in Chanam. Yeah. And we went out to dinner and I've been following their YouTube channels before. You know, everybody's thinking about coming to Thailand. They start looking at all the guys in Thailand, what they're doing. We all went to dinner and we had that exact same conversation and Chocolate Man Thailand asked me specifically, he said, Frank, how much is it costing you to live in the States right now? How much are you making? How much are you spending? Right. And I told him what my numbers were and then he said, you could do the same thing here for 3000 Why? Why? Why are you still working? Yeah. And he just left it at that. So he, simple. He goes, why are you still working? And I'm like, you're serious? Yeah. And he's retired Air Force as well. As he, and yep. um, Joe's retired DOD, and okay. he'd been here for a year and a half, so they all had the same thing. And Chuck is a prior veteran, so they all they all knew. I didn't have to say anything. They already they already had a good idea what we have. And there's like it's just a decision. You just have to decide that you want to come or don't want to come. Right. And so for everybody that's in the states and thinking about doing it, I sold my house. I came here with two suitcases and my golf clubs. Wow. And I said, that's it. I'm packing up and going. And I'm don't regret at all. I mean, I'm living, I'm living the life I've always wanted to live. Right. And don't take anything away. I mean, I, I enjoyed helping raise my family. I love my grandkids. I, I love everybody and doing things with them. But this is me time. Yeah. And You've I'm, earned uh, it. I'm, it's, it's, and I'm taking full advantage of me time. Like today, we went out. We had some of the best barbecue that's had to be had here in Patia. I was late. You've got, yeah. You have <laughs> absolutely phenomenal food anywhere that you want to go here, from Western food to Thai food to... Japanese food, I mean, any type of Asian food you want. Fresh seafood every day. Um, you've got a plethora of women that are more than happy, and, and I don't, they're more than happy to be friendly and be nice to you. Yeah, no and nuclear rejection here. None, yeah. and it's a, um, and it's that's the whole culture. I mean, you and I can walk down the street and not, how you doing, how you doing, yeah. welcome. And, and, very welcome and very open to this country and everything. And, but even to go out, um, the average person, like if you were in the States, probably wouldn't notice you. Exactly. But you come here and you, you get attention and you're like, wait a minute, you're, I, like, I had like four women talk to me already today. Just, yeah. And just being nice. Yep. You know, and. Um, but Don't want anything from you. Just want to be nice to be you. Be nice and sit down. Because it's their culture. And have a conversation and be out. Yes. And um, and you just put you so much at ease and so right. relaxed. And you don't worry about, I haven't watched the news in four or five months. You know, I call, I call my mom. I still I still call my mom and uh, at least once or twice a week, check in on her, see how she's doing. Right. And she's always telling me, did you hear about it? Did you hear about it? I'm like, nope. And yeah. I don't want to know because my stress level has gone down significantly yeah. because I'm, I'm not listening to all the noise. Yeah. And like I said, we don't have the noise here. Everybody, we're all like, like when I grew up as a kid, we were all neighbors. Everybody talked, right. everybody did stuff. We didn't have any fences or any of that stuff. Everybody was, we're all hanging out, rode our bikes over, threw them in the yard, out running around. That's exactly how I feel here. Right. And there's always something going on. Um, there's a pool party right now we're missing. There's a pool party we're missing. Yeah, there, there, there are so many things happening. You can't, it's your choice. Right. You know, when guys, you know, they, they tell you when you retire, you need to have something to do. You definitely got to There hear. is stuff to do here. There are so many things to do here that, I mean, I have to take days to go, I need a break. Yep. I got to go back. Like last Sunday I said, I got to stay home and sleep. I just need sleep. Yep. And, um, and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. So if you haven't decided, man, make a decision. Reach out to El Guapo, Richie Mac, Chocolate Man Thailand. Do a consultation with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And sit down and ask them, you know, hey, what's it going to take? Figure out what type of visa that you need to get here. It's easy to look it up online. Yeah. Uh, Richie has the partnership with um, Brandon over at Culture yes. and Roof 21. And May was talking about when we did the business symposium. 
I don't think you made it to that. I didn't make it. Yeah. I, I thought it but, was today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, we got the dates mixed up. But I'll, I'll tell you, they have the whole infrastructure set up, which is the segue into my last question. Yeah. And this is one of the biggest things. And as a, a, a military man, you understand the importance of the team. I talk about the dumbest commercial I've ever seen was an army of one because there is no such thing. Never. Um, we're always going to be stronger together. And what has impressed me probably more than anything since I've been here is the network that you all have established. And even if it hasn't been people that I've met through you all, um, I was getting my second fitting for my suits and I, I'm, I'm a mason. And uh, I heard a brother talking, uh, uh, it, uh, well, I call him a brother because he's a Mason as well, Mason, but he's sure, a white sure. guy, you know, talking about visiting the lodge. This was just yesterday. He has already cleared it for the next time that I come through. And for those of you that don't know about the fraternal life uh, and uh, masonry, you know, you have to get permission, yes. you know, to go and visit. And he said, you know, bring these certain things that you need and we would love to have you next time you come through. And I just met him getting my suit fitting. But the network here, honestly, of all the places I've been internationally, what you all have set up is second to none. What, what do you, what, talk about the network and the support system if somebody is gonna make the move here. How difficult is it to get help, to get guidance? Is it something that's hard? That's probably the easiest thing there is to do here. I agree. And um, so just like we're talking about, reach out to any one of us that are here. Mm -hmm. um, we have several groups, so, so the VFW is a very active group here I met for the Hal military. From VFW doing stuff. just a few minutes ago. Um, we have what we call a Taco Tuesday group oh, that wow. we meet, and every Tuesday we go out for Mexican food, and then we go out. A lot of the guys are either owners of businesses and clubs or managers, and they do bar crawls and go out and you get to meet everybody. Um, the YouTube guys, everybody that has a YouTube channel are the subscribers. Once a month we have a meetup, oh. and we go to that, and you get to meet across the board, not just American, but international. Right. Because um, if you'll see here, there's a lot of YouTubers here from Europe, from, oh, yeah. from China, from India, from all over. YouTubers show up from all over the place. And um, so that meetup is really huge. That's, that's a great network. And then once you get into that kind of circles where you start meeting everybody, and then we have, there's a whole bunch of business owners as well too, and guys that have been here a lot longer than I have. And, but it, it's, if you're familiar like BNI back in the States, Mm -hmm. um, it's almost similar to BNI, but we're not functionally organized where we meet everybody. Everybody has their own business. We're all connected. We're all, you know, just like we were talking about today, you know, hey, do you need a driver? You need this. Right. Or, I need to get my sign fixed. Or, hey, do you know a plumber? Or same stuff that we'd have in the States. It's just a little bit different when you're overseas. Um, and you have to kind of get used to the Thai culture and ways, you know, nothing's done quickly. But um, you'll have people that you have walk people you that it. walk you through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, had another buddy just retired from the Air Force as well. Got here, you know, helped find a condo, helped get his visa, you know, tell him where to go to get his visa, went and got his driver's license, you know, just simple things like, and, and everybody's here willing to help you out, tell you where to go, and it's it's that easy. Yeah. And um, take you out, and introduce you to people, and you definitely are not alone. Yeah. If you come, if you are, it's because you do it by choice. Yeah. And uh, but it's very easy. Any of the any of the YouTube guys that we just mentioned, you can reach out to, or even myself come by. I'm more than happy. You know, I hook you up. Whatever you need to do. That's awesome. Um, just like we're when you're going to meet Robert here in a minute. You know, he's been here a week and yep. you know hooking him up with stuff and coming back. Uh, it's probably the easiest transition, other than the military. So I, I accumulate. When you were a service, when you PCS to a new location, you had a sponsor, yep. they helped set you up, they showed you around, did all this stuff. If you come here, we're kind of like your unofficial sponsor, you know, we're gonna look out for you. It's just one of those, we're still, we're all fellow Americans, we're doing yep. things, you know, and, and you mentioned earlier, we're all brothers. We're yep. all brothers and sisters in arms. You we know, really so, are. And there's there's a lot, and I, I, I'm not excluding the women. There is a, people that know, there's a lot of women here too. There's a lot of yeah. women that come, and I want to just make this just to the guys. There's a lot of ladies that are coming over now too that say, hey, I'm, I'm, done. I'm done, I want a better life. And there's so many things for the ladies to do here. And, and they, a better lifestyle than what they had. I and, agree. And to be treated more equal, mm -hmm. I think is a good thing. But um, any one of them can come and 
we'll wrap you up. As, that's why I said I felt more like I was in the service again, that brotherhood of everybody. I mean, we're just helping each other. I didn't call it, we're like our own mini chamber of commerce. Right. Everybody's helping everybody. I mean, we were at uh, Golden Tiger Bar last night with yep. Dante and doing stuff and, you know, another part of Navy man. So it's yep. just a- uh, Shout out to Dante, he's a brother as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. John, Dante yeah, and yeah, I are yeah, the same yeah, fraternity. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Um, Awesome, brother. If you haven't been to Golden Tiger, man, go to Golden Tiger. See Definitely Dante. check out Dante. And, uh, He's and, the uh, swollest dude in there. <laughs> yes, yeah. And uh, and we were last night, we were down in Soy 6, down yep. in Ruby Bar. Yeah. So go down and see Bijan. Yeah. And, um, and we'll get you hooked up down in that area. But there's so many places, everybody. And they, these guys have been here for a while. Right. And, but we got business, we got things operating, we're, we're working within the Thai culture. Yep. And, um, you know, we were talking about that even why we did this um, to get the business started was to help put the family to work. Yeah. Because when, when you're involved in an Asian family, and it's the same thing, Asian, your wife's Colombian, yep. um, the Latino community, everybody, when, when you're in the family, you help the whole family, familia, everybody helps everybody. Real and, fast, touch on that because I love your story, whatever you're willing to share sure. about helping the family out because your approach, I think, is exactly what is needed. And this is one of the biggest things that the detractors say when it comes to, you know, meeting a partner overseas, you know, oh, you're gonna have to take care of their family. There's that show 90 Day Fiance, yeah. where they just showcase the worst of the worst. What is your experience? Because you, you've actually done it, you're actually doing it. What have you done? So. Once I retired, we had the conversation, you know, obviously my income wasn't what I was when I was working full time. I'm on my retirement income. And right. I was telling my partner, I said, I, I'm not going to support everybody. I'm not just going to give money to everybody. I said, what I will do and what I want to do is start a business and let's employ everybody in our family into the business. Right. So Deer is our manager mm -hmm. and she is my partner's daughter mm -hmm. and her cousin works here in Nice and our wash and dry, her nephew and his wife run that business. Right. So they are working. They work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Wow. And, but they pull, they pull salary, just like I pay everybody the same thing. The business is earning the money. They're earning their own income. They're earning their way. They're supporting their families. Deer has children. Her nephew has a baby. Right. Um, her cousin has a family. Um, each one of them, all have families that are working here and they're supporting themselves. They're, they're taking care of their own. And I, you know, it's the same thing we're talking about in the States or, you know, there, we need to get back to the small business again. Yeah. Um, if you come here, free enterprise, we, man. they got the free enterprise. You come here in Thailand, they'll put up a little noodle stand right here. We got another little booth here. You got a little coffee shop right here. You got a massage shop. You've got a tailor, you got a, a, a cleaner. You've got family all working small business to support themselves. Right. So here I didn't mind doing small business. They're helping themselves. They're supporting themselves. Right. And they're working hard for it. And they feel so much better about it. Right. They're, they take pride in it. They're they're excited. They want to learn. They love having the opportunity. And I'm I enjoy watching them. And so through collaboration and opportunity, you've actually been able to contribute to and stimulate the Thai economy and provide jobs for your partner and, and her family yeah. and everything. That's, and how long have you been here? Seven months. Seven freaking months, dude. Frank, I can't tell you how profound that is. And, and let me just ask you this because you know sure. the modern women in the West, we're gonna troll just a little bit. You stay above bar and I'm gonna go right. gutter, okay? Uh, Frank, do you make a uh, million dollars a year? One point two million dollars a year? I do not. You do not. Okay. You are uh, an Air Force retiree. Veteran. Yeah, retiree man um, that lives off of retiree salary, and you are here. And do you feel like you're comfortable? I'm very comfortable. Are you missing out on anything, bro? No, I'm. I have more now than I ever did when I was in the states. Wow. And it's a. Um, I think when we're talking about income, it's not, and I always felt this way in the States too. It wasn't about how much I made or how much money I had, but it was one of my experiences that I had. Right. And the people that I was surrounded with. 
um, and my family, of course. And we were talking about a little bit about this in the car where we're coming over. Mm -hmm. um, I've always my lessons and learn, and I, I people don't know. So I have actual Herbalife distributorship as well. So that's been my main main business. Gotcha. And I had a gym in the states. So part of that philosophy, Jim Rome. I don't know if you follow Jim Rome yep. and, and doing this stuff. Um, so a couple things, you need to surround yourself with people that are better than you. Yep, you're gonna be the average and of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes, you, you better are. not be at the top. And yeah, yeah you don't wanna be at the top. Right. Because you've got to be in that constant learning mode. And it's, it's not about what you have now, but what you aspire to. Exactly. And, and that's not just monetary. Um, I've always said before, it's, I think it's three prong. Okay. It's physical, mental, and spiritual. Got it. If you take one of those prongs away, it's like having a two-legged table. Exactly, yeah. and then you're gonna fall. Yeah. So, I, I took what I've had. I've never been abundantly rich, but I've been wealthy in love and support and family. And I've taken what I have made, and I've made it work for me. Right. And um, try to do a little bit of residual here and there. Um, but the bottom line, and if I can help you, whatever it is. I will get something back tenfold. The principle of sowing and reaping. Yes, what, what, my friend. What it is, you know, you, you take care of your fellow man, you treat them the way you want to be treated. I help you succeed in whatever it is that you wanted to do, and I have been a I've been a success just in that. Man, that is awesome, dude. That is awesome. And um, and you apply the same thing here. It's yeah. just a but I, I pretty much that's what I live my life by. Yeah. And the only way m I learned a long time ago, and I credit my mom and dad, but the only way I can keep anything I have is by giving it away. Bro, the, these are major, I told you my channel <laughs> began in its infancy all about success, and this is all stuff over the last six, seven years that my mentor, my mentorship team has taught me. And this is, they don't realize how high level, it may sound basic, but they just got black belt game. And you're right. The best way to get anything that you want out of life is help as many people as you can get what they want. Yes. And uh, it's showing and bearing its fruits now, man. Frank, I'll tell you, it has been an honor and a pleasure to meet and hang out with you, man. And I don't say that haphazardly. I actually mean it. Um, I know that we're going to be lifelong friends. We're going to keep yes. in touch. I'm already thinking about getting the money team to come out and us to invest in a property out here. But... Um, I gotta say thank you for all you do. And one of the great things as a black man that I see uh, with the expat community or the Passport Bro, Passport Joe community is there's no color boundaries, man. No. Dude, you were in the, uh, we, our team was all black guys and you yesterday, man. Yeah. And, um, and it can be the other way around and it doesn't matter at all. I've gone to bars where I'm the only black guy and, and it doesn't matter, man. So team, the things that are, uh, fears and apprehensions to you in the States don't even exist over yeah. here. Don't let it hold you back, man. And so. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause yeah. I, 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 one of the things, and I think this goes back to our military training and being in, I, I don't see a color. You can't. I see a man. Not if you're gonna and be in the trench. I see a man, I see my brother. Um, and that's what you see here. I think more so than, it, it, again, I think we're just going back to simple basic human stuff where right. we're both the same yeah we're both the same and i'm going to treat you the same way you treat me yeah and you know it's like we we're saying you know you don't have and i'll throw it out there we, we don't have any of that woke stuff we don't have all that crazy you know yeah you can do whatever you want to do you know it's in there but if you if you treat me right i'll treat you right we're good you know and it's just say that there's still stupid people out there we all right. know that and I doubt we're ever going to get rid of it. Right. right? But um, what they say, you can't fix stupid. No. And <laughs> or lazy. Or lazy, exactly. Yeah. But that's one thing. I feel none of that here. And I've it's, seen it's zero, zero of it. And the, the other part of that, too, is, and we didn't touch on it very much here, but um, I feel completely safe here. I can walk around here all day at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, and not feel yep. threatened or anything. I feel completely safe. Um, I don't have to worry about somebody jacking me up or yeah. taking my stuff or doing anything. I, I don't even lock my doors half the time. 
tea. And it's just a, um, yeah. it used to be like when I was back in Japan, you know, it was the same thing. You just had a culture that they, they respect each other. They don't do that stuff. Right. And um, does stupid stuff happen here? Yeah. I mean, but usually if you hear about it, it's usually expats or somebody that's been acting a fool. Acting a fool. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, you, you don't see that. It's, that's that's it, big, man. And that's one of the first things I pointed out to Richie Mack because, like I said, my travel experience, my second home is Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Right. And I, it, it's always going to have a place in my heart. Um, but Pattaya is cleaner. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely safer. And I have taken that walk home at 3 o'clock in the morning with uh, one T mini martinis and made it home or to the hotel just fine yeah. here. You know, um, and did not feel threatened in the slightest. Even crossing the street, as much madness as it may be, yeah. I call it polite chaos. Yes. Because they will slow down and try not to hit you here yes. versus other countries where it's like, hey, yeah, they don't bonus care. points. Yes. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but uh, Frank, we are over time, man. I oh. appreciate you so much. Oh, you too. Uh, please, can you tell, and I'll, what we're gonna do, we're gonna clip this, I'll put it in the beginning of the video. What is the location of Aster Thai Massage and Spa? We are in Pattaya. Okay. We are at the major crossroads of Third Road and Pattaya Thai. Okay. And this is called Soy Rungalan. Yes. So if you're looking for a landmark here in Pattaya, just right opposite behind the hotel right here, we're in the Land Royal Residence Hotel. Okay. But Tony's Gym is right here. Tony's Gym has been famous. It's, if you say Tony's Gym, usually in Pattaya, everybody who's been here knows where Tony's Gym is. Got it. We're the first song in the right past Tony's Gym. And we're open for business. Come on in, make an appointment. Yep. Uh, Guapo, thank you so much it's for having us, It's been a pleasure, brother. man. It's been a uh, welcome Captain to Thailand. Yeah. We've had, I can't tell you how much fun we've had. We've had a blast. And it's, it's, there's not enough room for the interview to say how much fun we've had. I actually felt guilty and, as much fun as I was having. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I got a job. Them cats are working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Um, but yeah, come visit us and um, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to our continued friendship. Absolutely. And uh, we've got a connection that's going to go on for a long time. For sure. All right. Again, well, don't forget, beautiful eyes, like, subscribe, ring that bell, get on this channel, and uh, drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. Come yeah. over and visit us, and uh, come come Thailand, ask for Thai Massage, look me up. Yep. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And make sure you tell them El Guapo sent you, but yes. team, it's been real, it's been fun, and we'll see you on the next one. El Guapo, uh, out.